The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. We are here with Hanwha Vision. Uh, before we get started, I'm here to do the housekeeping. I want to let you know you will be muted during the program. We are keeping the audio clear because we are recording this. But we do want you to have questions and comments, so please use the question or chat boxes on your webcast viewer to ask questions, and I'll be monitoring those during the presentation. We will take up your questions one by one during the Q&A at the end of the program. Uh, this webinar is set for an hour, but we'll stay until all of your questions are answered. I will be uploading the webinar to the FISPA website, so if you want to refer back to this or have your business colleagues review it, I'll have it uploaded by early next week. Uh, for a copy of the slides, there will be contact information uh, for Hanwha on the final slide of the presentation, so you can request that directly from them. And with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to the team at Hanwha Vision. Here you go. Thank you, BJ. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so we'll jump into the presentation here. So I wanted to introduce our team. I'm David Ubrick, a business development manager. Uh, primary area of focus is the uh, eastern half of the United States. I have a lot of background in the security manufacturing side, uh, mostly on the video platforms with March Networks, Verant, Paycom, and now Hanwha. Uh, I'd like to introduce Omar and uh, let him give you a little bit of his background. Good morning, everybody. Omar Valdemar. I'm with, um, I've been, I am with Hanwha, obviously. Uh, I've been with Hanwha for about six months. I previously came from Hanwha from City National Bank. I was a senior vice president of corporate security systems. So I have 26 years of uh, practitioner experience in banking, 34 years as a security practitioner, very involved with ASIS International. I sit on the North American Regional Board of Directors, and we're here to review our products. Thank you. So one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring up right up front uh, is our biggest challenge has always been market perception. So back before 2016, we were known as Samsung Techwin. In those days, everybody knew who Samsung was. Even today, it's a household name. Everybody knows it's Korean. And then we uh, were acquired by a company called Hanwha. Uh, at that point, everybody said, wow, they sold them to a Chinese company. Uh, you know, so these comments came from IPVM uh, this week and it was in reference to our uh, manufacturer favorabil favorability statistics, which are extremely strong, but yet we still have people that are putting things into uh, the comments and, and responses to IPV IPVM, such as uh, a little shady with NDAA. Uh, you know, we get called out based solely on the name. Uh, they're made in China. Their chipset is Hike Vision. Uh, you know, it can be hacked by the Chinese government, all of which is misinformation. So, first and foremost, the products, everything we sell is NDAA compliant. It is FCC approved. We have a resource uh, section on our primary uh, Hanwha Vision America page that will allow you to look at all of our NDAA compliancy information, including the complete product list that is NDAA compliant. So Hanwha Group is still not a household name and probably never will be. Uh, we are a proudly Korean company. We have no uh, Chinese ties or uh, manufacturing and the Hanwha Group is a $60 billion global conglomerate company. We have divisions in defense manufacturing, alternative energy, aerospace, chemicals, uh, finance, uh, leisure and entertainment, and construction. And you know, really a very, very large company. Some of our uh, divisions are under different names, uh, as an example. Our solar panel manufacturing division is called Qcells. We have a massive factory in Dalton, Georgia, and we're getting ready to build another one in Florida. Uh, we're, again, a global conglomerate. 
our group within Hanwha is called Hanwha Vision, and specifically our, our group here in North America is called Hanwha Vision America. We have 30 plus years of security manufacturing, and we manufacture in our factories in Korea and Vietnam. So unlike a lot of our competitors, we don't use contract manufacturing. We do it with our employees in our factories using our equipment manufactured by Hanwha Precision Manufacturing, using our Hanwha Q-Cell solar panel, and we feature our Hanwha designed uh, WiseNet system on a chip processor. So the processors within our uh, higher end cameras are all designed and manufactured by Hanwha. We're only sold under the Hanwha brand and we don't uh, allow other people to rebrand our products nor do we rebrand other people's products within our camera product line. So as you can see, we have a lot of different uh, certifications and, and compliancy uh, listed at the bottom of this page. So being a defense manufacturer, cybersecurity is a paramount piece within the overall Hanwha architecture. So we have things that other manufacturers don't necessarily have. We have our own uh, cybersecurity resource uh, team, which is called the SCERT, which is located in Korea that stays on top of all of the uh, cybersecurity threats and hacks and communicates out what of our products, if any, have any type of vulnerability, as well as uh, you know, working to fix those vulnerabilities and so on. We provide uh, hardening guides for our customers to go through and take advantage of our best in class cybersecurity. And we also uh, have a number of our cameras which are certified under the Underwriter Laboratory Cyber Security Assurance Program, which means that the uh, UL has tested those uh, cameras to uh, very high standards, including the you know, manufacturing process, uh, you know, serial interfaces and everything about the camera to make sure that we are uh, practicing the best cybersecurity that we can in our products. We've also introduced, uh, sorry, I'll back up a slide, it's, uh, a number of our cameras that are uh, FIPS 140-2, which is Federal Information Protection uh, Standards, and that actually includes a small piece of hardware that we put in those cameras called a Trusted Platform Machine, or TPM, that generates random numbers that gives us even higher levels of security and encryption in the cameras to be used in federal government's highest uh, secure areas. So we're very, very popular in the banking marketplace. Uh, first and foremost, we are a camera manufacturer. We do have a VMS platform, which I'll talk about at the end. The majority of the customers you see on this page are uh, camera customers, although some of them are Hanwha end-to-end uh, -end customers. So one of the things that Hanwha brings to you as a security integrator is really a very broad lineup of cameras. So where a number of the VMS manufacturers popular in the banking have their own lines of cameras, they tend to have a very limited uh, offering. So uh, you know they have domes, they have bullets, they have box cameras, but they don't tend to have a lot of the more specialty cameras, more application specific. So we also manufacture analog cameras still. So if your customers have analog cameras, they're looking for uh, replacements for them. Our HD plus series are all high definition analog, but they are all capable of supporting standard definition analog. Uh, you know, for your technicians, it's a very simple process. There's the uh, menu button on the camera, you press and hold that for 10 seconds and it puts it into standard definition. If they want to go back to high definition, they do the same process again. So it can toggle back and forth. The T-series cameras are really specialty cameras. So this is where we get into things like stainless steel cameras, explosion proof cameras, thermal cameras. So uh, again, a broad variety of cameras across a broad number of form factors. Uh, 
but really for specialized applications. So we've been using the thermals and bispectral thermals, which have both thermal and visual uh, camera built into them to do things like fence line perimeter protection uh, and so on, particularly at you know, back offices and data centers for our financial customers. Our Q series is really what we uh, consider our entry level cameras for the financial institutions. We do have an A series, which is a lower uh, end product to this. Uh, the A series we don't generally sell to banking, they're designed for uh, residential and small business, they're plastic housings uh, and, and lack some of the uh, higher end feature sets that our higher level cameras have. So Cure Series is really where we start uh, with our financial customers. They run from two megapixel to five megapixel, have analytics built in, and uh, we will be announcing at the ISC West show that some of our Q Series cameras will also have object classification AI, which I will cover uh, in a few slides from now. Our X series is really the where we're talking to our larger banking customers or you know those customers that really want very good image quality, very high feature set, uh, you know things like extreme wide dynamic range and so on. This is really where our X series comes in. And then finally, our P series is uh, mostly our multi imager cameras, but also some of our highest level AI cameras that include not only object classification, but extraction, which again, we'll talk about in a few minutes. I mentioned our WiseNet 7 chipset. This is our proprietary system on a chip and really drives our higher end cameras. Uh, gives us a ton of uh, processing power to add all kinds of features, analytics and AI into our camera sets. We do have sound classification analytics on a number of our cameras. I will uh, point to the uh, red letters at the bottom of the slide. These are designed for situational awareness and are not uh, designed as a life safety tool or to replace a uh, you know, more dedicated higher cost sound uh, situation uh, system. So we really are looking at what the uh, ambient normal sound is and then looking for uh, sound signatures that deviate from that that background noise to try to identify what may possibly be happening but we always recommend that this is video verified before any action is taken so our financial customers have some unique applications and you know some of them for me were this particular uh, convenience comes in is at ATM machines and in drive through pedestals where you have the Mazda Miata pull up and then right behind it a Ford F-350 and on the Miata you're getting the top of the person's head and on the 350 you're getting the middle of the door. Uh, that's because in the conventional mode of a camera the view is wider than it is high. With our hallway uh, mode capability, we're able to turn the view of that camera to make the vertical, the uh, the larger pixels versus the horizontal. So that really allows us to have a better opportunity to capture those vehicles that are high or low. Uh, also, even in a walk-up ATM, to be able to see not only the top of the head, but potentially the hands of the person that is at the ATM. So those are things that you know a lot of other cameras don't have the capability to do within uh, you know your ATMs and your and your drive-through pedestals. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So I talked about uh, you know some of the capabilities of of our X series and our Q series cameras. One in the X series is uh, you know really the full frame IR and the ability to adjust the individual IR emitters to balance the IR uh, view across the entire scene. So instead of getting hot spots uh, where the illuminators are, are you know, too bright or images, the objects are too close, what have you, you can really do a lot of uh, adjustment using the X-series cameras. 
they are also uh, scene aware, so they will uh, automatically adjust, but you can also go in and manually configure them. So I've mentioned our AI, and what I specifically want to talk about is the object classification. So within our uh, X-Series core and plus cameras, as well as our P-Series AI cameras, and coming soon, our Q-Series, we're able to identify objects within the video. So we're using machine learning uh, artificial intelligence to identify vehicles, people, faces, and license plates within the image. I want to make it very clear this is not license plate recognition or facial recognition. We do have cameras specific to license plate recognition. This is just detecting the presence of a license plate within the scene. So basically when we are able to capture objects then in our uh, P-series cameras, we can also pull attributes from those objects to uh, be able to tell what type of vehicle it is, colors of vehicle within people, you know, are they wearing glasses, a bag, uh, et cetera, and then be able to take that metadata and store it either on the camera or transmit it back to VMS platforms that support uh, the metadata streams. So with this, then, we can start looking at scenes and identifying types of objects. So now we're not just looking at pixels and trying to determine what a, a lump of pixels is doing. We can now be much more specific and develop our analytics around a specific type of object. So in the case of something like uh, loitering analytic, yeah, I'm sure you have banking customers that uh, have problems with loitering in ATM vestibules, but a lot of things can be a false positive if we're just looking at pixels. So if somebody, you know, the cleaning staff goes and, and, and rolls a garbage can into the vestibule, walks away, and that garbage can is there for five minutes, it's loitering. Uh, you know, same thing with the UPS delivery that drops a box walks away, uh, again, shows up as loitering. But if we can tell the analytic, we only care if it's a person, then we have a much higher reliability rate on that analytic. Within our analytics, we can create up to eight uh, zones. So if we wanted to exclude the area immediately in front of the ATM, we could do that, and then just have the loitering analytic looking at the rest of the vestibule. Similarly, in uh, you know situations like the hook and chain robberies, we can set up a trip line in a pixel-based analytic to detect something that is approaching the ATM. We can even tell the analytic that the object has to be pretty big in hopes that you know some only a vehicle will trip it. The problem is, you know, if a cloud goes over and creates a shadow, or if a vehicle drives up and its headlights go across that line in the wrong direction, a pixel-based analytic can't tell the difference between that and a vehicle. But with object classification AI, we are very uh, aware of what a vehicle is. And so when we create our line cross analytic and say that it can only be tripped by a vehicle, then we have a much higher reliability on that analytic. In addition to that, we can take those analytics on the camera and we can make a schedule around those analytics. So if we only want the analytic to be enabled between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., we can set that up on the camera so that it will ignore things approaching the ATM, vehicles approaching from the wrong direction. Let's say the you know, service truck is coming in to, to work on the ATM and they just back in up to the ATM to work on it, uh, it's not going to trigger if it's in the middle of the day, but it will trigger in the middle of the night. So again, within those analytics, we can select whether we want uh, object of person or vehicle, and then we can create a schedule around those analytics as well. 
I'm going to turn the uh, presentation over to Omar to talk about some of our most popular cameras in the banking and financial market. Thanks, Dave. So we will speak about popular cameras. Again, we have cameras that go from two to five megapixels in our Q series, X series. We have a large range and same on our P. So we have many cameras a lot of financial institutions are using, um, but we're gonna talk about some of our specialty and popular cameras. I'll start off with our, uh, one of our most popular is our covert camera um, options or cameras and lenses. We have our PNM 9000 QB, which is a multi-sensor camera head. Uh, the PNM 9000 QB is similar to our XMB 6002, uh, which is a single camera um, system. We have camera lenses that range from 2.4 millimeters all the way up to 4.6 millimeter. And we have a fisheye 1.6 millimeter camera lens that you see on the right, the 1080 VA. The camera lenses come in barrels or they come in 90 degree flat camera heads. Uh, the 9000 QB and the 6002 are UL um, camera head systems. And in our 6001 is not UL rated, but has similar camera lenses as our 9000 QB and 6002. If you go on to the next page, Dave. The, we have fixtures and uh, mounts for our covert lenses. The, one of our most popular ones is the ATM uh, mounting bracket that is the STB2000. This bracket can be used on either of our barrel lenses, the 2480VA or the 46, uh, for, uh, 1080, um, 46V80, take the V away, sorry about that, and the 24 alpha, 2480 alpha. Um, we also have our bandit barrier fixture. Uh, this is popular at traditional tower lines. With the 9000 QB, you can potentially install four of these bandit barrier fixtures with the uh, 2.4 millimeter 90 degree lens in there uh, with one camera head. You also have our height strip camera fixture. Uh, this is very popular at exit points. Um, with uh, the bank protection of 1968, there's still a requirement to identify individuals committing crimes. This is perfect for a lot of the bank security officers to install this and give their colleagues the ability to identify height of an individual exiting the location. For those that don't like the height strip, we have uh, some more um, appealing uh, exit camera systems. We have our flush mount uh, SHD 46 VD, uh, which comes in a couple of um, finishes. And then we have our surface mounted SLA T 4680D, which comes in different finishes too. That's surface mounted, it could be on a mullion. We also see this potentially uh, surface mounted on the wall uh, for some applications. Next set, please, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we have our X-Series Plus camera system uh, options, the XMV 9083, 8093, 8083, and 6083. They come from two megapixel up to 4K. You know that these are the X Plus um, cameras based upon the 83 or 93 um, on the naming convention. Uh, the X Plus camera system is a modular system. Uh, this is popular for new construction. These camera comes in different pieces, different sets or parts, uh, starting off with the mounting plate. In new construction, that mounting plate can be given to an electrician. It can be installed on the wall or in the ceiling uh, during the life cycle of the project. When the project's ready for the camera head, the tech can come back with the camera module. If you take a look at the uh, image that we're showing, there's a box with a little window there. Uh, that window's there for a the integrator to to be able to pre-configure the camera back at their office uh, with whatever settings that institution wants, IP address, firmware, whatever it might be. Uh, that can be done without taking the camera outside of the box. That camera then gets delivered to the construction site. Tech then takes that module out, puts it onto the mounting plate, and that camera can be ready to um, for validation, field of view, and whatnot. This camera does have a uh, remote verifocal, uh, so the, you're able to adjust that, uh, the, the, the focus remotely. 
in, an enhancement to this camera is our pan tilt rotate zoom camera set similar to the x series plus uh, the pan tilt rotate zoom cameras have the ability to pan left and right uh, tilt up and down and rotate right on the axle uh, in order to adjust the field of view remotely so in the life cycle of that project that we were just talking about the tech can come put the ladder up put that module in put the dumb cap on and walk away once the uh, furniture is installed uh, computer monitors are in the customer and the integrator can remotely adjust the field of view on that camera again this is very popular in some new construction some integrators are actually um, selling this at a discount I'm not saying that you have to do that because they understand that it's less labor less trips you don't have to roll the truck out to that um, location as many times and they can adjust for the field of view remotely um, another more another popular camera um, set that we have is our fisheye set uh, we have our xnf 9010 and 8010 and then we just came out with our 9013 rv the 9013 is a 12 megapixel ai fisheye camera if the vms um, if the vms uh, is integrated with this camera uh, we can do object detection uh, so the we can set the scene up so that it only records on let's say when a person enters the scene versus our 9010 and 8010 are pixel based um, with a night with a fisheye camera there's a lot <clears throat> a large field of view and so it's real easy for these cameras to start running away with video traditional video analytics so AI potentially can save in storage space on the back end um, another new camera that we just came out with. If you go on to the next slide, please. Um, if there's anything you want to say, Dave, feel free to chime in. <clears throat> the next camera that we have is our TID600R. This is a new intercom camera, came out maybe about five, six months ago. The TID is popular at points of entry. Uh, we found that many of our customers are potentially um, thinking about using it at ATM vestibules. Uh, the gives the ability to speak to someone in an ATM vestibule remotely. It also uh, meets the requirement of having a camera that can see what's going on. This is a 180 degree plus uh, camera. Uh, so the field of view is awesome. Um, I, I like this camera also to be applied potentially at a drive up. Uh, we're trying to replace old analog cameras that are sitting in a small cavity um, with IP. This is a great camera. It's uh, weatherproofed. It's uh, it's it's great for the environment on the exterior of a location, and so this can be mounted on the drive up equipment potentially and provide uh, the imagery and the ability to communicate with somebody at a drive up. We have our SPD 152, which is our decoder. Financial institutions have a requirement to have a situation awareness uh, monitor inside the break room so that when something does happen, the colleagues inside the break room can see what's going on inside the branch. This is a great option. It only requires one network cable. Um, we don't have to run HDMI cables from our MDF or IDF rooms all the way back to a break room. Uh, we have our SPM 4210. This is a network IO um, module. It gives the ability for us to potentially have logic on a camera, activate an output on the on the uh, I.O. box and maybe integrate that with an access control system or with an alarm or intrusion system. Um, our cameras are probably the smartest sensors out there, better than motion detectors. So potentially an AI can be set up so that when an individual enters a scene during a certain period of time, the I.O. triggers. Um, that's the last. Oh, no, we have our multi-sensor cameras now. OK. So uh, these are popular with our financial institutions that have large campuses and have the ability to put cameras on the exterior of their branches. Our most popular cameras are our dual imager and our 180 degree imager. And we also have our four sensor camera that's popular for exterior on the corner of some of our of facilities, I should say. The uh, PNM 9022 is a 180 degree panoramic uh, um, camera it has four sensors the stitching on the camera is pretty great actually you can't you can probably barely see the stitching you can see the color um, variance between some of the Im uh, imagers uh, but it looks pretty good uh, to actually see it uh, with AI is even better 
Um, I think I think David had shown an image earlier of this camera with AI. Um, um, let's go on to the next scene or next camera, please. Um, but great for exterior. Um, here we have our multi-sensor um, pan, tilt, rotate, zoom camera. Uh, each lens has the ability to pan, tilt, rotate, and zoom, just like the single sensor pan PTRZ that we talked about earlier. Uh, this is great in, for exterior locations where it's hard to get to the camera based upon height. Um, we have situations where a, an integrator has to potentially rent a lift, and this gets installed 20 feet above the uh, off, above finished floor, and the field of view is adjust, may, uh, made by the technician. And later on, the end user doesn't like the field of view. That lift needs to be returned, and those adjustments need to be redone. By installing this camera, the there's only one trip. The, the, it's installed, you walk away, and the camera lenses are adjusted remotely by the end user and the integrator to meet the requirements. Uh, the next camera that we have is our dual sensor multi-directional camera. We just came out with the AI version of this with our C, PNM C7083 RVD and our PNM C1280 RVD. Um, this is great for exteriors. This is great for hallways where maybe at a point of entry, one camera's pointed at a door uh, to validate who entered and maybe the other camera lens is down, uh, pointed down the corridor to see what's going on uh, inside the back office. This camera is also great for fire exits where there's stairwells. One camera can be pointing up, one camera can, lens can be pointing down. Um, and then on, in branch facilities, this is great for one camera for two towelers. And we could adjust the field of view to also get situation awareness for maybe cash containers. Maybe there's a teller cash recycler, teller cash dispenser right by that teller. The lens could be set up wide enough to catch the customer at the teller line, maybe see what the colleague's doing and maybe uh, point it at the teller cash recycler for alarm validation in order to determine whether or not uh, an alarm did occur or an incident did occur upon alarm. Um, that's the last camera I have there, Dave. So I actually wanted to take a real quick step back uh, up to the covert cameras because I did want to mention one functionality that may be very interesting. So in a lot of situations, uh, you know, particularly in the drive-throughs where they're feeding an analog video switcher and audio, and uh, you know, so need the analog signal to be there uh, on the camera, but maybe the financial institution wants to record the video in 1080p uh, digital imagery. So both our XMB6002 and our XMB6001 series cameras, covert cameras, have built in an analog. Uh, port. So I don't know if you can see my mouse, but if you can, it's it's right here where the little dongle plugs into that. And we can deliver both IP and analog simultaneously. And so we can continue to feed that analog switcher as well as deliver IP video to the recorder. So uh, we've had a lot of banks that are, are deploying this. So, you know, they don't have to try to retro their um, their drive-through system, drive-through teller systems, and uh, works very, very well. So I wanted to uh, jump in and just do a very, very quick discussion of our Wave VMS platform. So our Wave VMS is a very, very easy to use and easy to install platform. It can be deployed in a number of different ways. So you can buy the licenses and install it on your own hardware. You can buy it from us installed on a uh, Dell tower or a Dell server platform, or uh, you can buy what uh, we call the WRN, which is our uh, appliance-based system running Ubuntu Linux. Uh, typically in the financial sector, 
unless it's a small financial institution, we don't recommend the WRN because of the management architecture. When you get beyond about 30 of those recorders, uh, you have to create a separate management uh, entity for that. So uh, really, for most financial institutions that are running WAVE, they are running it on a server or tower-based uh, platform. It's not a heavy resource requirement, so it can run in a virtual machine as well. So the client is, uh, is, is very simple to use. So, you know, we have our uh, list of servers with the uh, resources attached to those servers, whether they're, uh, you know, cameras or audio devices or what have you. Uh, we can save layouts. So when we create uh, a screen, we can save it as a layout. We can share that layout with other users. We can implement things like maps. Uh, we can bring web pages in. Uh, you know, we can do a lot of functionality with WAVE. In fact, some of our regional sales managers do their entire PowerPoint presentation driven from within the WAVE platform. Uh, so it gives a ton of, of flexibility and functionality. And then, uh, you know, down towards the bottom here, we have other systems. So, you know, it is a, a multi-location uh, system. It does have uh, LDAP awareness and uh, and other functionalities that you would look for in uh, enterprise level VMS. We're getting ready to launch our Wave 5.1 platform at the ISC West platform or at the ISC West conference, excuse me. And then uh, the 5.2 release will be coming out late this year. Our main focus on those is building in additional enterprise level management capabilities to the platform. So uh, WAVE is very much in use in the financial uh, customer base, but I would say generally speaking, uh, customers that have 100 or less locations, it's ideally suited for. If it's above that, let's talk, let's discuss what the deployment timeframe is, because as we come out with 5.1 and 5.2 uh, and beyond, the number of platforms under a single management architecture and the way that we architect the management will be uh, you know, dramatically changing over the next year or so, which will open it up to the largest banking customers that we have out there. So with that, uh, that's the, the content that we had planned for today. Uh, our contact information is here on this slide. Uh, again, I am uh, primarily focused on east of the Mississippi, Omar primarily focused west of the Mississippi. I'm physically located in North Carolina. He is in California. Uh, we will be, uh, well, I, I'm not going to uh, steal BJ's uh, <laughs> ending, so I'll let her talk to that. But uh, you know, we will be at ISC West if anyone is attending. We will have a huge team there, and uh, we will have the largest booth on the show floor immediately as you walk into the main entrance at ISC West. We will have a 5,500 square foot booth there, and about 120 of our colleagues uh, will be there as well. So thank you again for attending, and I'm going to kick it back to BJ for closing. As uh, as David had alluded to, I would like to put in the shameless plug for the FISPA conference, May 1st through the 4th, and Hanwha has a booth at our show. It's not 5,500 square feet, but you get to come and talk one-on-one -on -one with David and, and talk more about what you learned here today, and they are in booth 109. So... Uh, look for them on our floor, uh, and if you haven't registered yet, uh, do that. We did record this session, and I will have it up on the FISPA website. The contact information for Omar and David is up on the screen. If you want to get a copy of the slides, I suggest you contact them directly. So thank you again, everybody, for spending your time with us today, and a big thank you to David and Omar for putting on this presentation for us. These webinars are a part of the benefit of being a member of FISPA. If there's other topics you'd like to see covered, just let me know. With that, we will bring this to a close, and everybody have a great afternoon. It was great to get together with you again. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Thanks, PJ, and thanks, everybody that joined. Thank you. Thank you.